Hey guys, it's Stephanie here from Oh You're Lovely, and today we are going to take one of my favorite craft supplies, not even joking, napkins, pat pattern napkins, if you will, and then this stuff. What the heck is this? Tune in. I'll explain. It looks a little weird, but it's so much fun. Today's tutorial, I'm stinking excited because this is a glue, um, this, this stuff right here. This is a glue that um, not many people know about, in all honesty, and maybe I'll tell my little fun story of how I came about this one time, but we're going to use this glue, and we're going to use this napkin right here, and we're going to create something so stinking customizable, and yes, we will add solar flowers to this as well. All right, let's jump into this. For this tutorial, you are going to need a surface to put your napkins on. I am using this uh, ornate, now I've already painted it, but this ornate wood piece, we do carry this in the shop. We'll make sure to link it in the description. I've spray painted it pink. I wanted to spray paint it white. That's another story for another day. It's not that interesting, but it is now pink. I'm not angry about it. I love pink. You will also need the weird looking green bottle of rice glue. That is what this is called. I cannot wait to show you guys how this works. You will need some little squeegee uh, glue scrapers, I believe is what they're called. Again, we'll make sure to have a link in the description. A paintbrush, handy dandy napkins, soul flowers, greenery, and I think we're gonna try something that I've never tried before, and so, a power drill will be handy. So anybody who knows me will tell you, I have a paper napkin problem. Oh, maybe not a problem, an obsession. So I collect paper napkins, I use them for decoupage um, type projects all the time. And one time I was looking for, I was using tissue paper actually, We'll start story time in just a second. But I wanted to show you with paper napkins, they usually come in either two or three ply. And that means how many layers of paper there is. So this one's a three ply. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pull so that we have just the top layer left. Look at, can you see? I like keeping these two and using these sometimes. And then this one I just use for normal napkin stuff. So I was doing a project with tissue paper and I had noticed with Mod Podge that I was getting so many wrinkles and there's a couple ways to like alleviate that, but I was still frustrated. So I started trying to find a glue that was meant for lightweight projects or like really lightweight paper. And in comes, walked into my life, changed my world, this stuff right here. It's by Yamato, Y-A-M-A-T-O, and it is rice glue. It's the starches basically left over from rice, and it is amazing. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of struggling with this just a little bit. It happens. You just kind of want to roll and kind of play. Sometimes I even tear just a little bit to open that up. I can see where it's attached. Yay! Oh, it's so satisfying. Now I want to, I'm only gonna put my um, tissue paper napkin in this part. I'm a little ambitious with this project because we've got a lot of like little pieces of wood that's connected and it'll make sense in a minute why I'm being ambitious with this. Uh, if this is your first time doing it, I would do a solid piece of something and then be able to sand off the edges easily without a lot of no fuss, no muss, and all that fun stuff. I, of course, needed to be just a little bit extra extra and decided to make it a little bit more difficult on myself. 
I'm just deciding where, because this one tissue, or this one napkin doesn't cover my entire board. And so I'm gonna have to lay down a second one and I wanna find, there it is, the most non-obvious pattern disruption I can kind of come up with. So now that I know that, I'm gonna set that aside. Let's set this aside. We'll just set these right over here so that I remembered my length and we're gonna grab our rice glue. Now this comes out clear. Um, it will dry completely clear. Normally why I would do this white is because I want these colors to pop and now they're gonna be a little bit more muted with this pink. Um, I'm just gonna put a healthy amount of this on, but we are gonna scrape up a ton of it. But um, I want to get the, this in here. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm going to, especially on these edges, get this up to the edge to make sure I'm covering that as close as possible, but not going over the, like the swirly bits. And you will find your own rhythm and flow of what works best for you when it comes to working with this glue, whether it be a brush or one of these fun little uh, glue scrapers that I'm gonna use in just a second. all covered. Just trust me on that. I know it's not the easiest thing to see. What we're going to do is we're going to go up. I'm going to go in this direction and I'm going to kind of go in linear rows and I'm going to put the excess glue back in the tube, which sometimes is its own little experiment to get it back in there. But we're going to kind of pick up all the excess because we don't want to, like we want enough that it's going to adhere to the napkin or tissue paper, but not so much that it's going to create those wrinkles and bubbles and things. So I'm getting all that extra stuff off, but don't worry, we're going to spread this around a little bit more. So again, it gets all covered. And I find that giving it a little bit of air and pushing this, it goes back down into the tube fairly well, because I don't want to waste any of this. two shots to lay this down and then once it's like in place, it's in place. So a little bit of a steady hand and then with my hand itself, and this is where I can lift this up. Now if you were doing this with Mod Podge, you would not be able to lift that back up. Once it's down, it's down, you lift it up and it's going to rip. Um, I'm going to lightly tap it with my hands to start helping like those little air bubbles get undone and anything like that. If you shift the paper and it does rip, sometimes you can put it back in place. Otherwise, I've been known to get up my paint once it completely dries and paint where that flower would have been or that design and try to blend in that little, little hiccup that we had. All right, get the other side of this paper on. What you can do with another glue scraper is very gently start to go over any other wrinkles that you're seeing that your hands and your palms did not flatten out. Very gently, okay? Do not, do not really go in with a heavy hand on this, but it does help to smooth out some more of those little finer wrinkles if you really want this to be as flush of a application as possible. We're trying to almost have it like sink into that wood and are unable to tell that this is tissue paper on top of it. 
It is gonna move a little bit and shift, and that's again why we want a light hand on this. And Stephanie just ripped the paper. Son of a gun! It happens, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another napkin. I didn't need to find my napkins, I just needed to cut off the bottom of that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the same part of the pattern that I accidentally lifted up. And I'm gonna cut this out. Now it's not gonna stick to the stuff that's already laid down on the glue, but that glue is still showing right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find the actual pattern itself and we'll be able to lift up the rest once it's fully dry and none the wiser that I messed up a little bit and pulled out my pattern. So we're gonna just kind of tap that in. Trim this down as much as I can right now. Too. Now we're gonna let this sit for, um, usually I let them sit for about 24 hours and then we'll come back and we're going to remove all this excess tissue paper. I won't be able to show you my favorite trick, but we're still gonna remove this. So while we're waiting for this to dry, let's work on the flowers that are gonna go right in there. So while we're waiting for our plaque to dry, let's play with some soul flowers, a little bit of greenery, and we're going to make a simple, small, kind of front-facing bouquet because we're gonna put it right up on that plaque and we wanna make sure that it sits nice and flush. So for this one, the greenery is going to be kind of like a fan. We're just gonna let that be our base, sits nice and flush, make sure, I'm, this is gonna be the back, so I wanna make sure all my greenery is kind of sitting forward. So I'm kind of just moving some stuff around on the back end to make sure that the back looking nice and flat to me. Move some stuff around. Pull off leaves by accident. I'm gonna grab a little glue. We'll fix that. Nothing but real life on this one today, you guys. Okay, get in there. There we go. Okay. So, greenery is set. Now we're just gonna grab our flowers. I'm going with primarily yellows, but I did get a couple bright pinks um, these are Dorothy's. I'll make sure to list the different flowers that we're using, um, as well as some lighter pink flowers, but then the rest are all pretty much yellows and a little bit of tinge of orange. What we're gonna do is while we're doing this, we're gonna, because it's a front facing, we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna bend it on forward, just like that, so that we're seeing the stars. That is our flowers for this arrangement. And we don't need a lot. I've got way more flowers than what I need for this particular um, bouquet. But I wanted to give myself some options, so that is what I did. Okay, I think it's done and it sits nice and flat. And we'll push this down a little bit because there's a lot, not that much greenery popping at the top. Focus some of that to come through. So let's bring these down a little bit. There we go. Okay. I think I think we're I think we can call this. I think this is good to go. So it's good to go. I say that and then I'm like, oh, let's add one more flower. my life. Just one more. Okay. Okay. I'll stop. Okay. There is that. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab vinyl tape for this one and we're going to just put it together because we're going to finish it off with a little bit of twine because we're going to see these stems. So we want to add just a little bit of nice finishing touch to it. So I'm going to use my vinyl tape to hold everything together so that there's not a lot of shifting happening. 
down. So where this vinyl tape is, now we're going to add some twine to that as well as we'll go down a little bit further. I'm gonna trim some of these stems, but I won't finish trimming them until we put it on the plaque so we know just how long we want our stems to be. Fun fact, I'm an impatient crafter, so I've already taken my board. It's not fully dry yet, but I've kind of already trimmed a little bit and we're going, I might regret this, but we're going to try to get the rest of this edging off before it's fully cured and dry. I think I can do it, but we might regret this later. So now I'm just gonna kind of look I feel good about like it sitting right there, sitting pretty. Um, I am gonna need to trim my stems just a little bit more, I think. But for the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put probably about this much with twine. So we're gonna do that real quick with my handy dandy giant thing of twine. Find my end. We're gonna get some glue on there, and then we're gonna wrap this bad boy. something that like if it went all the way up here and there wasn't all this design work I would take a piece of sandpaper after it's dry and then just go down in a downward motion all around the edges and it gives you this perfectly crisp finish especially if you made sure to get all of the glue up to the edges this one is a little bit trickier so I'm gonna get my little um, box cutter thingamajig and I'm just going to kind of score this now where there's actual like gaps in the design that comes up pretty easily but where it's actually a piece of wood that's where we need to score that a little bit so that we can cut up those have a nicer clean cut now we are going to have some leftover little bits of napkin don't worry about that because we are going to clean that up then with the sandpaper. challenging myself I'm doing something I've done before but make it a little bit more difficult for myself so to speak and I have in the past done something similar to this and then I use these cute little couplers that you use for like plumbing and things and I would put it right there and it would hold my peas perfectly together but instead and my hair is gonna also be difficult today <laughs> it's a theme I've decided I want to drill holes into this plaque and then I'm going to string through some twine and make just a cute little bow to hold everything together. 
Why? Because I want to be difficult. So that's what we're gonna do and that's where our power tool comes in handy. The first thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is make two little holes to figure out kind of where I want them. I do want the twine or the string or whatever ribbon slight, pretty close to where the bouquet itself is so that it's nice and tight and flush. If I make it wider, then we've got wiggle room, so to speak. So I'm gonna get up real close. Now, making straight lines and things like that is not my forte. So there is a very good chance that these holes will not be like perfectly spaced and right like on the same linear line. I'm okay with that. Okay, I have my holes in place. I am going to grab my drill. I am using an eighth inch drill bit, I think. And I have a piece of wood underneath here, an MDF as well. shards of wood. We want those gone. And now I'm going to figure out how the heck I'm going to get my piece of twine right through those holes. Wish me luck. Oh, here's a trick I found. If you take a, like a stem of wire and then you kind of just help push it through a little bit, it'll work. If you have a needle, it's probably better, but I didn't have a needle on hand. All right, so I'm going to just string it from the back there and then we're going to lay our cute little bouquet right there. And then we are going to tie that as tight as we can. I'm gonna double knot it. And then I'm going to make a cute little rabbit ear bow tie because I don't do bows. <laughs> it is a skill I have yet to master and I don't know that I ever will. I'll trim this off. And there she is. All right, guys, there you have it. We are done. I challenged myself. Challenge accepted. Challenge accomplished. No, that's not the same. I don't know what the saying is. I don't know what I'm trying to say. All I'm saying is, boy, oh boy, isn't she pretty? <laughs> so I hope you guys love this tutorial. I hope you try rice glue. It is my favorite glue in the world just because I love pretty napkins and I love putting them on things and it makes it 5,000 times easier so I hope you give it a whirl and make yourself a cute little something doodad to go wherever you want as always if you have any questions make sure to drop them in the comments we will answer them as soon as possible to find out about the 100 plus sola style flowers actually I think it's 150 now <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is it's for sure over a hundred. Solo wood flowers, as well as craft supplies and greenery, go to oyourlovely.com. And until next time, this is Stephanie from Oh You're Lovely, and you, my friends, are absolutely lovely. Bye, guys.